Okay, so we want to start from paper number two, February, March, 2022. Okay, first question, a student investigates a pendulum. He measures the time for the pendulum to the complete 20 oscillation. He repeats three experiment three more times. The readings are shown. What is the average period of the pendulum? There are multiple options. You need to calculate the average time period for 20 oscillation. Eighteen point four. Eighteen point four. Yes. Uh, what is the average period of the pendulum? Okay, so basically in answers, all answers are for single oscillation, right? We calculate the time period or the answers are written with the reference of one oscillation, right? So first we need to convert all these 20 oscillations time period into time period of one oscillation. So if we divide all quantities of time period by 20, so we will get the time period for single oscillation. Let's suppose for first value, we need to divide 17.6 by 20. So we will get the time period for one oscillation. So 17.6 divided by 20, 0 0.8. 0 yes. And same goes for the other values. 19.8 divided by 20, 0 0.99. 17.6 again, same, 0 0.88. Then 18.6 divided by 0 0.93. Now add up all these values and divide by 4 to find out the average time period. 0 0.93 plus 0 0.88 plus... Divide by 4. 0 0.92. So B is the right answer. 0 0.92. Okay, so second question. A tennis ball fall from the upper stair window of a house. What can be what can be said about the acceleration of the ball if air resistance is ignored? So if air resistance is ignored, so what will be the acceleration of the ball? It will increase. It will increase. No, I think it will stay the same. It will stay the same because the acceleration due to gravity uh, on every body remains constant. That is the value of G. But due to air resistance, this value will force or will face resistive force in the opposite direction. So if there is no air resistance, so the value of acceleration due to gravity will remain same because ball is now moving in free fall motion. So this acceleration is due to gravity and it remains same or constant for everybody. Right? Yes. And question three, a car joins a road at a speed of 14 meter per second and acceleration at four meter per second squared for five seconds. What is the final speed of the car? Okay, so we have acceleration. This is the time and this is speed is the initial, right? Yes. So we can easily find acceleration A is equals to Vf minus Vi over T and we need to find out the final velocity. So 
तो फाइनल वेलोसिटी विल बी इक्वल टू एक्सेलरेशन इज फोर टाइम इज फाइव प्लस फोर्टीन तो ट्वेंटी प्लस थर्टी फोर मीटर पर सेकेंड राइट तो दिस इज द फाइनल स्पीड ऑफ द कार दैट इज डी Okay. Uh, yes, it is the second. Mm, the fourth one. The gravitational field strength is given, and the gravitational field strength. this is for mars and this is for venus so we are having different gravitational force uh, one is for venus and second is for mars an object has weight 42 newton on venus so this is the weight of a body on planet venus what are the mass and weight of the object on mars so how you calculate the mass and weight of the object on mars uh, first we find it of venus mm. for venus or for mars oh mars okay. okay the object has a weight okay no right we have to find out with the reference of venus because the value of venus is mentioned over here so with the basic formula w equals to mg because mass remain constant on venus and uh, mars so first we need to find out the value of mars then we use the same value for the planet mars so weight on venus is equals to 42 m is unknown and gravitational is 8.8 So forty two divided by eight point eight will give you the value four point seven. Four point seven. Four point seven seven to four point eight. Okay, so round off four point eight kg. So mass remains constant, and second, if we want to calculate for the second planet that is Mars, so we again use the same formula. Weight on Mars is equals to mass divided by gravitational strength on mars so that is 4.8 multiply by 3.8 18. 18.24 18.24 18.24 newton so it means option a right Yes. Question five. A student carries out an experiment to find the density of a rock. Which two measurement does the student need to make to determine the density of the rock? Sir, is it C? Increase in mass, increase in depth of the volume. Uh, if you remember the basic formula of density, so density will be equal to mass divided by volume. Yes, mass divided by volume. So it means we have to increase the mass and increase the volume of liquid so in option c they are talking about the depth and when we are talking about the depth so that is important for pressure in liquid but for time being we are going to determine the density so that's why we have to increase the mass plus increase in volume of liquid right 
You're right. Okay. Okay, question number six. A car has a mass of 1500 kg. A constant resultant force acts on the car and the car accelerates from 15 to 20 meters per second in four seconds. What is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the car? Force equals MA. Force equals to MA, okay. So according to this formula, we already have a mass of a car that is 1500 resultant force act on the car and the car accelerates from. Okay, so we need to find out the acceleration from this quantity. So it will be like this. Again, same formula, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time m is equals to 1500 final velocity is 20 initial is 15 divided by 4 so final answer will be equal to 1875, 1900. 1875. Question 7. So a metal wire is loaded up to the limit of proportionality. Which statement is correct? Sir, is in D? Up to the limit of proportionality, there is no change in the shape of the wire. Uh, no, actually D is not possible because when we uh, exceed the limit of proportionality, so according to the graph, there will be a little change in the length. So that's why D is not possible. Because they are talking about limit of proportionality. So we need to answer within the limit of proportionality. So Hooke's law is not obeyed when the load is increased from zero to this point. A is not possible. Uh, when the load is increased beyond limit of proportionality, the diameter of the wire will increase. So that is also not possible because we know that if we increase the load, so wire is now going to be more thinner as compared to the initial stage. So diameter will decrease. And option C, when the load is removed, the wire returned to its original, original length. So limit of proportionality means the same that within the elastic limit, the value of the spring or the length of the spring will return to its original position. That is option C. Okay. Yeah. Question number eight. Answer 
ओके सो इन क्वेश्चन एट द डायग्राम शोज अफॉर्म मीटर रूल एम एन पाइवेट्स मिड पॉइंट पी टू वे डब्ल्यू वन एंड टू आर हंग आदर साइड ऑफ दाइवेट विच रो इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन डी डायरेक्शन ऑफ रिजल्ट एम ओके सो दे आर आस्किंग विद द रेफरेंस ऑफ रूलर and they mention that the rule remains balanced so rule remains balanced mean this rotation will be equal to so clockwise uh, yes so the clockwise rotation and anti clockwise rotation both are equal so it means that direction of resultant moment about m is equals to 0 and direction of resultant force on rule is equals to 0 so it means force is equals to 0 and moment is equals to 0 so the rod is in equilibrium state because no force and no moment is acting on the rod right yes question 9 d yes velocity is the vector quantity question number 10 a resultant force of 500 newton so force is equals to 500 newton and x for 10 second on a car of mass 1000 kg so this is the mass of a car and this is the time this is the time period and in this given time period a resultant force of 5 newton is acting on a car of mass 1000 kg this causes the velocity of the car to double what is the final velocity of the car so what will be the formula to calculate the final velocity of the car f equals ma uh f equals to ma okay okay basically they are asking with the reference of the formula of impulse but if you start with the reference of f equals to ma so that will also be the same f equals to ma and a will be equal to velocity over time so a will be equal to v over t so that is the formula of impulse that rate of change of momentum f is equals to p over t so either you start with this form or this form both are possible so we all have value of force mass and time we just need to calculate the value of velocity so shift all values f t and m on left hand side and find out the value of v Five meter per second. Yes. The okay, force is equals to five hundred multiplied by time is equals to ten divided by one thousand. So five meter per second is the final velocity of the car. And one more thing before writing the final answer, they also mention another statement in the last of discussion. This causes the velocity of the car to double. So it means velocity is going to be double. So it means we have to multiply the final velocity by two. So that will be equals to ten meter per second, right? Yes. So B is the right answer. Because velocity of car will be doubled. So first we find the velocity, then the double the value. So it will be equal to ten meter per second.
question 11 a child pushes a toy car along a horizontal surface and then releases it as the car slows down what is the main energy transfer kinetic to potential uh, actually if we are converting kinetic to potential so it means car have still some source of energy and it will convert or it will if it car will allow so it will convert this potential energy into another form of energy so it means that if car is moving uphill or let's suppose it is moving in upward direction or at some specific height so then car gains potential energy right but car is moving on a horizontal surface so it means there will be no potential energy if car is moving on the slope like this so then car will gain some source of energy but in this example, car is only moving on a horizontal surface. So that's why kinetic to potential is not possible. So sir, is kinetic to? It will be converted into from kinetic to thermal because car push, a child pushes a toy car. So when it applies a force, so there will be also a resistive force. And that resistive force creates thermal energy that is due to friction. So among all these options from kinetic to thermal is the best answer because energy converts from kinetic to thermal energy due to friction and due to friction cars comes to X after some time. Because we are not using chemical energy, we are not using batteries in the car. So A and B is not possible. And C is not possible because car is moving on a horizontal flat surface. If car is moving uphill or towards the height, so then option C is possible. Okay. So question number 12, at time is equals to zero, a cannonball is stationary inside a cannon. The cannonball is then fired from cannon at T. The cannonball moves forward and moves backward. What happens to total kinetic energy and the total momentum of the cannon and the cannonball between time is equals to zero and time is equals to T? Okay, so we are having two important things at time is equals to zero. Cannonball is at rest or in a stationary state inside a cannon. So it means cannonball is not fired at time is equals to zero. And when it is fired at time t is equals to t. So the cannonball moves forward and cannon back moves backward because of that repulsion or repulsive force. So cannonball moves forward and cannon moves backward. So what happens to the kinetic energy and the total momentum of the cannon and the cannonball between time is equals to zero and time is equals to T. So let's first talk about the cannonball. So what type of energy and momentum cannonball gains over here? Uh, according to the option, the total kinetic energy of cannon and cannonball. Okay, so they are asking in the mixture form. So we have two options changes or remains the same. So kinetic energy will change or remains the same. Change. Change because initial stage both are at rest and after uh, firing the cannonball both are in motion right. So that is option A or B possible C and D is not possible. And if we talk about the momentum. So what will be the momentum of the cannon and cannonball? It remains the same. Momentum remains same because 
before and after momentum is conserved. So B is the right answer. 12B. Right? Yeah. Okay, question number 13. Uh, sir, how did we know that the momentum is conserved? Uh, according to law of conservation of momentum, the initial momentum will always equal to the final momentum. There may be change in vol velocity or there will be interchange in the values of the velocities. Let's suppose if, uh, if we consider the example of a snooker ball, so let's suppose if a white ball strikes some other ball. So it means initially only white ball is moving and the second ball is at rest. So let's suppose if we consider this white ball as ball number one. So the mass of this ball is equal to m1 and the initial velocity of this ball is u1. And then we consider second ball, the mass of this ball is equal to m2. And the initial velocity of this ball is equal to u2 that is equal to 0 because this ball is at rest. And when the first ball strikes the second, so after collision both ball will move with some speed and in different direction, right? So right. red ball moves in some direction, let's suppose, and white ball is moving in this direction. So mass will remain same, that is the M1. The final velocity and the final mass will be like this. So mass remains same and velocity will become V1 because white ball is continuous in motion. So there will be some value of the velocity for white ball. But there will be a change in the velocity of red ball and that will be equal to u v2. So this is the final stage. And when we talk about the conservation of momentum, so conservation of momentum means that if we find the initial and final momentum, so momentum will remain conserved because initially white ball is moving with high velocity. And when it is strikes with the red ball, so velocity will divide among red and white ball. So both balls will move with some velocity and the velocity of the white ball will decrease. But the velocity of the red ball will increase. So that's why there will be a change in velocities because we know mass will remain same. So that's why the initial and final momentum will remain conserved. The overall effect will remain same, right? Perfect. This is the example just like if there is a bill of let's suppose 2000. And if five people divide that 2000, so let's suppose if someone contribute 500, someone 700, someone two or 300 like this. So contribution will be different, but the total bill will remain same. That is of 2000. So same case goes for the momentum that values will interchange, but the final and the total value of the momentum will remain conserved. All right, sir. Okay, next question. Question number 13, in a small hydroelectric power scheme, 800 kg of water drops. So this is the mass of water drops through a vertical height of 2.2 meter. So this is the height. Uh, the electric output is 10.6 kilowatt. That is the output power. Ten point six kilowatts. What is the efficiency of the scheme? Uh, sir, should we find the area of like the power of the first one? Uh, if you find out the initial power, so you just need to divide the output by input, so that will give you the final value. So we have a value of mass, and we only have the value of height.
तो व्हाट विल बी द इनिशियल पावर और द इलेक्ट्रिकल इनपुट वी कैन से दैट सो एनी आइडिया हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द इनिशियल एम okay so first we use the reference of energy that is uh, potential energy is equals to mgh and according to that mass is equals to 800 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 2.2 so that will give us the value of energy 1800 it's 17600 Seven. Okay, round of eighteen hundred. Yes. So eighteen hundred joules. So that is the potential energy or the initial input energy, and we know that they are asking about with the reference of every second. So it means time is equals to ah uh, one second. So power is equals to rate of doing work. So if we divide it by one, so value will remain same. So that means what will be the initial power? Eighteen hundred. Ah uh, yes, but we need to find out with the reference of kilowatt. I think because kg uh, power is equals to in kilowatt. So we need to convert this joules into, or this watt power will be equal to like this. <laughs> Eighteen hundred watts, right? So we divide it by one thousand. Hmm, but uh, input value will be less than the output value. P eighteen hundred. It's coming off as one point eight kilowatts. One point eight kilowatts. Yes. Hmm, but that is not possible because input value will be greater than the output value. Value of mass is equals to eight hundred. And it drops through a vertical height of two point two meter. So multiply by ten, multiply by two point two. That is eighteen thousand. Okay, so value is actually eighteen thousand. Because if we multiply eight hundred by ten. By two point two, so we will get seventeen six double zero. So if we round off the value, so that will be equal to eighteen thousand, right? Right, sir. I multiplied it by eighteen. Okay, so that will be equal to eighteen thousand watt. So the final power will be equal to eighteen kilowatt. So our input value is eighteen and output value is ten. So now input is greater than the output. So simply divide ten point six by eighteen. So we are getting fifty eight point eight. So for efficiency, we use the formula of efficiency that will be equal to output divided by input multiplied by hundred. So that will be equal to fifty-eight point eight. That is round of sixty seconds. So this is the answer for question thirteen. B. Okay, question fourteen. An object is at rest on horizontal surface. Which equation we use to calculate the pressure that 
the object exerts weight of the object area of contact b yes so b is the right answer because we know force is equal force over area is equal to pressure so that will give the value of weight of the object divided by area of contact Question 15. Answer B. Uh, smoky particles eliminated by a bright lamp are seen through a microscope. They move about randomly. What causes this motion? Uh, collision between the smoke particles, yes. Basically, it is related to uh, Brownian motion. The zigzag motion, so B is the right answer. Okay, question 16. Either ether is a liquid that evaporates easily at room temperature. The rate at which ether evaporates can be increased by bubbling air through it. The diagram shows this process. A student gives three suggestions why the rate of evaporation increases when the air is bubbled through. So student one suggests the temperature of the ether is decreased, suggests that the surface area of ether is increased, suggests that evaporated molecules are removed at a greater rate. So which statements of the students are correct? Two and three. Two and three is correct. So C is the right answer. And question number 17. Some ice is slowly heated and its temperature is measured. A graph is plotted of temperature against time. Which raw describe what happens to the thermal energy to the temperature in section X? Thermal energy is gained, but temperature stays the same. Yes, temperature stays the same because there is no change on Y axis. So that means temperature remains same. So option B is the right answer. Question 18. So which piece of apparatus could be omitted if the purpose of the experiment is to determine the thermal capacity of the object? Ammeter? Confirm? No. Because we need to find out the thermal capacity. So in thermal capacity, we need only thermometer. We need a stopwatch to measure the time, just like the previous graph. We know that in this whole graph or in this whole situation, we don't need to measure the mass. So it means we need a voltmeter and ammeter because we need to electrically heat up. We are not providing a hot liquid over here. So that's why we electrically heating the liquid. So that's why we required object, thermometer, heater, and stopwatch or stop clock. But balance is not required in this whole experiment, right? So B is the right answer. So right. Okay, question number 19. Both boiling and evaporation involve a change of a state from liquid to gas, which show gives the correct difference between boiling and evaporation. So if we talk mm, boiling, yes. So in boiling, process occurs throughout the liquid and evaporation occurs at the surface only. So it means that Okay. So C is the right answer. So C is the right answer. And next question, which statement describes thermal conduction in a metal by electrons? Also C? Yes, because electrons are free to move. That's why free electron will provide thermal conduction in a metal. 
Our tanker contains water. A tank contains water. Ripples are produced on the surface of water. Reflection is refraction is observed. What causes the ripples to refract? They hit the tank. Uh, they hit the wall of the tank, but that will reflect the waves, bounce back. Oh, change in medium. Yes. So we. We need to change the medium that is refraction. So that is B. And question number 22. Okay. So question number 22. The diagram shows wavefronts of a water wave passing through a gap in a barrier. Which change will increase the diffraction of the wave as it passes through the gap? If we increase the wave. Mm, so we need to change, we'll increase the diffraction. So we need to increase the diffraction in this process. So we have different options, increase the amplitude of the wave, increase the width of the gap, reduce the depth of water, reduce the frequency of the wave. So they are talking about the increase the diffraction. So increase the diffraction means the wavelength will increase, right? Oh, so reduce the frequency? Yes. So we need to reduce the frequency because frequency and wavelength are inversely. So for to increase the wavelength, so main concept is that they are talking about increase the diffraction. So diffraction will increase when wavelength will increase. So for that purpose, we need to decrease the frequency. So that is option D. Uh, the diagrams each show a ray of light from an object O passing through a thin curvaging lens and the principal focus in each diagrams are labeled F. Uh, which diagrams are correct? So you need to find out that which diagram shows the correct orientation. Sir, I think one and three. One two is wrong. And the problem with two is that light is not passing through this point. Yes. So one and three is the right one. So that is option C. Twenty-four. Angle of incidence must be greater, so B. Ref total totally reflect within the fiber okay so the refractive index of the material of the optical fiber is 1.39 total internal reflection so for total internal reflection angle of q must be greater than 47 b because we know that the angle of incidence is represented by q in this diagram so this must be greater than 47. So then it will be equal to the total internal reflection. Twenty five. See. Twenty five. An ellipse of the sun happens when the moon comes between the earth and the sun. Which statement is correct? Uh, visible light from the sun disappears before ultraviolet radiation and infrared radiation. 
uh, visible light from the sun disappears. And they are talking about an ellipse of sun when the moon comes between the earth and the sun. So let's suppose if we are having a sun over here and moon in between the sun and the earth. So visible light from the sun disappears before ultraviolet radiation and infrared. Uh, C is not possible because we still receive some uh, visible light from the sun. So infrared radiation, ultraviolet and visible light from the sun all disappear at the same moment, right? Because moon is in between earth and sun. So the line, light and the radiations coming out from the sun all are in the same magnitude or same quantity of all type of electromagnetic radiations are coming out from the sun towards the earth and all disappear at the same time. So D is the right answer, right? Uh, yes. Okay, question 26. The diagram shows air particles in a sound wave. Which row correctly in identifies the position of a compression and position of a rare faction? So we need to identify the refraction and compression. A. A because X basically represents compression because particles are close to each other and Y represents the rare faction. Those three particles are away from each other. So A is the right one. 27. Two isolated metal spheres are both negatively charged. The spheres are brought close together but do not touch. Which diagram shows the charge distribution on the spheres? They are brought together but do not do not touch. So that means there is a gap between these two spheres. So we need to identify the charge distribution. That is A also, also simple. A. But negative negative repel each other. So this distribution will not be possible because everybody uh, is neutral if we are talking about the normal state. But in this situation, both are negatively charged. And when they are brought close together, so we are going to uh, brought those two spheres close together. So it means that we are forcing them to come close to each other. So due to force of repulsion, negative charge will be on the other side. So that is option D is the right answer because both charge will repel each other. So all charges are trying to shift on the other side, right? Uh, yes. So option D is the right one. And if we talk about the next question, that is 28. Is it B? So two separate circuits have different power supplies. Both power supplies provide the same magnitude current. So power supply P has an EMF of 1.5 and power supply Q has an EMF of 3. Which is statement about Q are correct uh, when compared with B. So one first statement is Q supplies twice the charge per unit time. Uh, okay, so potential difference is double and supplies twice the energy per unit charge, twice the energy per unit time. So which statement is possible? First one is possible or not? Statement number one. If we talk no. about, no, because the statement one basically talk about the concept of electric current. Because they are talking about charge per unit time. So charge per unit time is equal to electric current. So that's why statement A is not possible. We have to talk about with the reference of energy, with the reference of work done. 
because we know the definition of emf so that's why of statement number two twice the energy that is also possible and twice the energy per unit charge or per unit time so both are the right possibilities so two and three is the right statement that is option d Okay, question 29. A. A is the right answer. That is also repeated from our topical worksheet, I think. Okay, so now we have question number 30. Which labeled component in the circuit shown controls the brightness of the lamp? That is also the easy one. The voltage? No, they are talking about the brightness of the lamp. Uh, voltage is fixed because we use battery or a cell over here. So it means voltage will remain same. You need to select some other component. There is, There are multiple components. Option A represents the voltmeter. And option X represents the lamp. Sorry, X represents lamp. And C is, what is the symbol C represent? Not the diode. That is a simple resistor, fixed resistor, right? All right. And if we talk about B, so B represents? Variable. Variable resistor. And what about D? That is LDR. Because these two lines represents the light source. So that is LDR. So they are talking about the brightness of the lamp. So brightness of the lamp can be controlled by variable resistance, right? Because fixed resistor has its own resistance and LDR depends upon the brightness of the light. So brightness of the light can be increased or decreased with the help of lamp. So basically lamp depends upon the variable resistor. If we increase the resistance, if we decrease the resistance, so the brightness of the lamp will change. Right? Yes. So B is the right option. That is variable resistor. Question number 31. Okay, so we have a circuit includes a battery to identical resistor, 5 ammeters PQRST. Which statement about the readings on the ammeter is not correct? B. B has a greater reading than R. This one? Yes. Okay, so P has a greater reading than R. They are talking about the ammeter. Mm -hmm. They are talking about which is not correct. Oh, uh, A. So A is not correct because P has a greater reading than Q. That is not correct. Because when we start initially, so current will be equal to some specific value and we ends up on the negative side. So again, current will be same. First, it divides into the multiple paths. But finally, it will combines again and we will get the same amount of value over here so that is a is not possible option a okay 32 a a because they are talking about a warning light turns on so 
LDR light dependent resistor and 33 is no more included in our new exam pattern that is related to gate so we skip this part and actually they are talking about the AND gate but that is not included computer science students may know about it okay 34 is also related to the gates that is also not included in our new syllabus new exam pattern 35 Two magnets are placed near a current carrying coil. The diagram shows the ex experiment arrangement and the current direction in the coil. Which statement is correct? C. Mm, X is attracted to the coil and Y is repelled. So first you need to find out the north and south pole on the coil, right? Because current is moving in upward direction from this side and current is moving in downward position from this side. So how we can uh, find out the north and south pole on this specific coil? With the help of? Right hand rule. Right hand rule. And right hand rule in the sense that thumb represents the direction of current. And the curl, sorry, thumb represents the direction of the north pole. Because current is moving in a circular coil. So that represents the north pole. And finger represents the uh, direction of electric current or the rotation of electric current. So current starts moving from downward. So we need to place our hand like this. So it means our thumb is on left hand side. Right? Yes. Or, sorry, we are using right hand rule. It will be like this. Fingers curl will be like this. Uh, it means palm is facing towards our face or out of the screen. And thumb will be on right hand side. Like this. So it means this thumb represents the north pole. Because current is moving in upward direction first, then in downward direction from the front side. So it means the cur finger curl is in the front of our face. And the only difference over here is that we need to use right hand rule to find out the direction of the north pole. So north pole will be over here on right hand side and south pole will be on the other side. So it means both will repel each other. So both X and Y are repelled by the coil. That is B. Right? Yes. 36. What happens to the size of the gap at X when switch is closed? So when we close the switch, current will flow in the first coil and current is already flowing in the second coil. So what will be the change? It decreases. Decreases. Option A. Yes. Okay. Let's check it. If we connect this uh, switch S, so current will start flowing from this direction. And in this coil, current is moving in this direction. So it means the direction of current is opposite. So it means the magnetic field generated will also opposite. Like this, both will repel each other. Right? All right. So you can also find out with the reference of right hand rule over here that current is moving from this direction and current is moving from this direction. So you can easily find out the direction because in let's suppose this is coil one and this is coil two so in first coil current is moving from the top of the coil first so it means we have to use our right hand rule like this we done in the previous question right because current is moving in downward position and palm is facing towards our side 
so current is going to be downward and in the second case current is moving from the back side of the coil so rotation will be different in that sense so it means that x will increase so it will be like this that thumb is on the left side and palm is facing towards the screen, right? So for second coil, we have to place our hand like this that our palm is facing the screen. So towards the screen. And thumb rep represents the north pole. So north will generate over this side. And if we talk about the first coil, so palm is facing towards us. So it will be opposite direction. So this will be the north pole that is on right hand side. So both will repel each other and due to repulsion, this X will increase, right? Yes. So got the idea how to calculate or how to find out the direction? Uh, yes. So it means X will increase. When a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force. Which statement about this force is correct? That is also it's parallel. Okay, so if we place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, so uh, which rule help us to find out the force? Um, left hand. Left hand rule. And in left hand rule, if you remember, uh, we use all three quantities in perpendicular condition. Like one quantity, let's suppose magnetic field is on x axis, current is on y axis. And what will be the direction of magnet, uh, magnetic force or sorry, the force acting on the coil that is on Z axis. So the condition we discussed over here that is all three of them are mutually perpendicular. So that is mutually perpendicular. So which option is the right one? Okay. So D is the right answer. It is perpendicular to the both magnetic field and the direction of current because three of them are mutually perpendicular. Uh, 38. Is it C? Uh, 38, which row correctly describes the conclusion that can be drawn from each of these observations about the structure of atom? 38, atom is neutral. Okay, and atom contains something that repels alpha particle. Mm, some follow path Y. And the other statement, uh, atom is mostly empty space. Atom contains something that repels alpha particle. Okay, so there is a choice between option A and B. Because we have to use only this specific statement and this is specific observation in this question. So according to this question, uh, at some specific point, uh, the path followed by Y is the reflection or the scattering from the specific part of that foil, right? And according to this, we know that most of the space of the atom is empty because they are not talking about charge. 
so it means we are not sure that atom is neutral or not we only need to focus on this specific statement right the mention in question number 38 we don't need to need talk about the journal concept because we know the journal concept but with the reference of the diagram and a statement they are not talking about the charge right so uh, right sir. option a is possible because in option a they are not talking about the charge in option B, first statement is correct that atom is mostly empty space, but nucleus contains proton and neutron that is not mentioned in our statement. So this is not mentioned. This is not concluded from the statement. And that is also not given. So these four points are not clear from the above statement and the diagram because we need to uh, draw the observations from the observation which we observed over here. Question 39. D. D. Atomic nuclei join together to form a larger nucleus. Yes. And the last question. B. Uh, B, more than one year, but less than two years. Uh, what is the half-life of ISO 2? It's 19,000. Um, yes, because total is, count rate is 38. So half-life will be equal to 19,000. Very good. So it means we need to divide it according to it. So it will be more than two years because it will be in between 26 and 17. Okay, so option more than one year or more than two year because we are getting 19,000. So 19,000 means it will be oh, more than two years. It is, it will be greater than or more than one year. Because after one year, we are getting 26. Now we have to reduce its mass more to get its half-life of 19,000. So it will be more than one year, but less than two years. It will be between somewhere at this point. So it will be... More than one year, but less than two years, option B. Because we get 19,000 in between 26 and 17,000. So it will be greater than more year, uh, sorry, more than one year and less than two year, right? And sir, I think it's D. More than three years? Yes. Okay, let's solve it again to get the concept. Actually, we first find out the half life. The half life is equal to. 19,000, right? Yes. So that is the half-life. And if we talk about the half-life, so half-life takes, and according to the count rate, after one year, we left out with 26,000. It means that is not the half-life. We need to find out the value of 19,000. So 19,000 will be somewhere between 26 and 17,000, right? All right. In between 26 and in between 17,000. So our actual half-life is in between 26 and 17. So that is, it will be greater than one year because we are not getting exact value in one year. So it will be greater than one year. But after two years, it will decay to 17,000. So that is less than our value. So it means less than two years, greater than one year. So that's why B is the right option. Right. So that is the final question of this paper, March 2022, paper 2.